I'm going to talk a little bit about the basics of generative artificial intelligence. What are we even talking about when we talk about generative AI? What is this thing that's been making headlines in the news and has a lot of our clients excited or anxious or oftentimes both? Before I get into generative artificial intelligence, however, I'm going to quickly define a few related concepts, starting with artificial intelligence itself. AI is a somewhat amorphous concept, but the National Institute of Standards and Technology at the U.S. Department of Commerce defines artificial intelligence as a branch of computer science devoted to developing data processing systems that perform functions normally associated with human intelligence, such as reasoning, learning, and self-improvement. Essentially, computer systems that are able to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence. Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence, focused on the development of computer algorithms that can learn from data. Until relatively recently, machine learning was largely limited to predictive models used to observe and classify patterns in data or make predictions based on, on that data. A neural network is a type of model for machine learning. The name and structure of neural networks are inspired by the human brain with artificial nodes that very loosely mimic the way that biological neurons signal to one another. Deep learning is in turn a type of machine learning that is performed with neural networks that have multiple layers of these nodes. Deep learning algorithms are very good at analyzing unstructured data without human oversight. Generative artificial intelligence was a breakthrough in deep learning. Rather than simply analyze and make predictions about data, Generative AI models are able to create new data based on the statistical patterns within the data that they're trained on. Large language models are a form of generative AI that use the statistical relationships between words and the corpus of text that they've been trained on to predict the next letter in a sequence of words in response to a prompt. And the substance and the quality of those predictions is determined by the model's training. What does that look like in practice? What does it mean to train an artificial intelligence? Well, imagine for a moment that we have a deep learning language model and we feed it only the complete works of Shakespeare, as the journalist Atish Bhatia did in writing for the New York Times in early 2023. We then ask the model to autocomplete text, letter by letter, starting from the prompt, act three, scene. In this first example, you can see that Without any training, the model just guesses randomly and produces gibberish. But by comparing this output to the original input that was used to train the model and analyzing through a series of mathematical functions how far off it was from the desired result, the strength of the connections between artificial neurons, called weights, are adjusted, and over time, the guesses get better. After 250 rounds, the model starts producing strings of letters that almost look like words. After 500 rounds, you start to see some short words form along with more structure. After 5,000 rounds, complete words are more consistently produced. And after 30,000 rounds, much of the output resembles or even consists of semi-coherent sentences of whole words. So this is admittedly an oversimplification of how training works, but it illustrates in a crude way how the more complex commercial models that we're all familiar with iteratively learn to predictively piece together words and form them into coherent sentences and paragraphs. Diffusion models underpin the most popular AI image platforms. For diffusion models, training begins with input images. Here, a photo of my English bulldog, Monty. The algorithm then adds noise to the image, effectively degrading the quality of it. For illustrative purposes, we'll say it degrades the image by 10% here. And then the model attempts to reverse the process by predicting, based on the noisy, degraded image, what the original looked like. Just like the large language model, the diffusion model compares its guess to the original training data to evaluate how close that guess was to the desired result and, in turn, adjust the connections between the neurons in the network. In this highly stylized and again, oversimplified example, we'll say that the model goes through this process, repeatedly tried to reconstruct an image with 10% noise. And once it's capable of accomplishing that, 
it'll add more noise to the image and go through the process again, incrementally adding more and more noise until eventually it's able to reconstruct an image with 60% noise, with 80% noise, 90% noise, et cetera. After going through this process enough times and with enough inputs, new images can be generated from just randomly sampled noise. In a way, these processes are akin to natural selection and evolutionary biology. Just as environmental pressures promote biological traits that are best suited for survival and propagation in a particular environment, which is how over millennia you get from single-celled organisms to hominids that are capable of making computers and sending rockets into space. Generative networks through training promote adjustments to their parameters to achieve outputs that are best suited to the model's defined purpose. So that's how commercial language model through training on massive corpuses of books and texts scraped from the internet gets from the equivalent of the babbling just a couple slides back to here a tweet about HBO succession in the style of SpongeBob SquarePants. How diffusion models can go from images of real English bulldogs like Monty to photo-like images of fake bulldogs like the ones here. And how newer models are now taking existing videos of, say, waves to create photorealistic simulations of imaginary ones.